Check, audio check, sound check. One, two, three, four. Audio check, sound check. One, two, three, four. Audio check. Good morning and good evening to all of you. This is Perm here. We welcome you to the demo session on the S4 HANA Embedded Analytics. So this is a new batch for the HANA consultants working with uh, the S4 HANA the development of the S4 HANA CDS views, the reporting consultants, the business analyst, the BW CDS views, and for the Fury consultants to be able to explore the SAP Fury query browser app and consume the CDS views. The recording of the demo session will be available later with the training support. You can contact the training team with uh, regards to the documents provided by the SAP for the certification on the S4 HANA Embedded Analytics, which is planned to be released by the end of the year 2019. With regards to the system access, you can contact the training support. Some of you are uh, already aware of uh, the uh, Tech E team, and uh, you can contact the uh, training coordinator to get your system access for the practice. The system access is available for four months and uh, it gives you ample time to practice. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so let's get started. I'll go through the slides first and uh, we will have some few details and followed by the system access. We will log in into the training system and explore the S4 HANA environment, the SAP Fury environment, and be able to see the embedded analytics CDS views. So let's get started. The documents which we require are as follows. The S4H400 and S4H410. The S4H400 document provides the Embedded Analytics Foundation, the EA, we call in short EA, Embedded Analytics, the foundation, followed by the S4 H410 document, which gives you the modeling with the development of the ABAP CDS views. So these are the two documents we require to follow. Please get in touch with uh, training support and get your document for the access, the download, <clears throat> and start going through these documents. Uh, you also have other related documents, uh, for example, the HANA documents if you're uh, also looking for the SAP HANA, you can get in touch with the training support. 
the training here is for the S4 HANA embedded analytics. This is with regards to the SAP consultants working in the BW uh, and also with uh, the various uh, functional part of the S4, the report writers, the Fury consultants, and the HANA consultants are required to go through the uh, training. The system access will be available for four months. So you have ample time to practice the training environment. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll start with some few slides. So with regards to the various uh, foundations on the SAP, we have multiple generations of the SAP. We have the first generation R2, second generation R3, third generation of the SAP ERP with multiple business suite like CRM, SRM, PLM, the uh, supply chain, right? And then the NetWeaver. Today we are on the fourth generation, the S4 HANA. So S4 is the SAP Four here is the fourth generation powered by the HANA database. So S4 HANA will be only available for the HANA database. S4 HANA is not on other database like Oracle or Sybase uh, or DB2. I'd say it is only available on the HANA database. Okay. So with this information, we go on to the next. The various improvements or the evolution with the arrival of the SAP HANA in 2011, after SAP acquired Sybase, SAP was able to have uh, the HANA database platform, the in-memory concept, of uh, the real-time database processing was enabled with the uh, HANA. And the following year, 2012, is when the BW was mounted on the HANA database, followed by the entire business suite you have here, the suite on HANA, which is uh, the uh, entire SAP ERP on HANA. We have the uh, CRM on HANA, then we have the uh, supply chain on HANA, the PLM on HANA, and other tools like the GRC, the MDM on HANA, right? So with the entire business suite on HANA, this was available in 2013, all right? And uh, this is also referred to today in some of the projects as the SOH project, SOH. The SOH is the suite on HANA the entire SAP suite on the HANA database, thereby achieving the customer orientation for the combination or consolidation or unification of the entire SAP business suite products. Well, you have ERP, CRM, SRM, PLM, supply chain, MDM, GRC, MDG, and the NetWeaver on the HANA platform here. So this was a milestone for the SAP to be able to achieve and for the customers to be able to derive the business benefit in terms of uh, real-time business transactions because there's always a need for speed for various transactions to be available on real time. And then of course, the uh, unification of OLAP reporting on the uh, suite on HANA and the availability of the cloud so the, for the first time in 2013, SAP was able to host the HEC, HANA Enterprise Cloud, the HCP, the HANA Cloud Platform, and today we have the SAP Cloud Platform. So for the first time, SAP was able to uh, create their own private cloud. Of course, SAP was also able to associate with uh, AWS, the Amazon Web Service, the Microsoft Azure Cloud, 
and other third-party cloud providers. So it was one of the milestones, and you still have today the suite on HANA as the first landing area to move on to the S4 or the B4 HANA today. So 2013 SOH. After the 2013 SOH, the further optimization on the finance module, the FICO, module of the ERP was uh, taken as a selective option to be able to integrate and consolidate all of the financial modules. We have the FICO. Within the FICO, you have FI General Ledger, the new General Ledger, the FI Asset Accounting, and the new Asset Accounting, the Material Ledger, right? Then we have the cost component, the controlling component, the profitability analysis component, right? the COPA, and of course, the other subcomponents like cash management, treasury management, house bank accounts, and others. So all of those sub-modules of the FICO, including the sales with the finance planning, was taken as the first selective uh, functional area to be optimized because over the years with the ERP in the first generation, the second generation and the third generation ERP, SAP have created a series of standard SAP tables as index tables and aggregate tables. So which were redundant and when you have the HANA platform, HANA does not require redundant data. So then SAP try to re-engineer by dropping those index tables and aggregate tables of the FICO module and having it converted into some of those uh, CDS views. Today we call it as compatibility views. So it was an experiment successful in 2014. So SAP was able to have the optimization and integration of the finance module. And today you have in the S4 a table, which is a universal journal line items table, right? So it is the AC DOCA table, which unifies all of the modules of the FICO. The following year is the 2015 first release of the S4 HANA with the Simple Finance 1 and followed by Simple Finance 2. The Simple Finance 1 is over here. So some customers may still have a source where they ask you that they have Simple Finance 1.0 version. This is the 2014 version. And Simple Finance 2 is when you have the 15.03 version of the S4 HANA. 1503 implies the 2015 and the 03 is the March edition in which the S4 HANA finance was released. Then you have here the 1511. 1511 over here is the 2015 November edition in which the entire logistics modules, so we have SD for sales and distribution, material management with the purchasing, procurement, the inventory, the production, planning, the QM, and other sub-modules of the logistics were launched on the November edition of 2015. So this is the official S4 HANA on 1503 and 1511. Here we were able to see some of the business benefits with regards to the functionalities provided by the SAP. As you can see here, some of these bullet points, simplify data modeling. So simplify data modeling, of course, with the uh, HANA data modeling, uh, you have uh, the uh, functions of uh, creating HANA views at the database and then the CDS views in the application server of the S4. We will talk about CDS views in a lot of details with the exercise and examples and the types of those CDS views. There are eight types of CDS views. So how are they going to provide a simplified option for modeling? We will have various sessions on that in the upcoming training. Then 
better user experience. So user experience, of course, powered by the SAP Fury Launchpad for both the technical users, the administrators, and moreover, the business consumers who are going to run these analytics on the mobile phones, on the Fury apps. You also have the transactional functional users uh, apps, which allows the functional consultants on the S4 to execute the various finance and logistics transactions. So no more use of the transaction codes, it's more about the Fury application experience. Advanced processing in the back end, the choice of deployment for on-premise. So customers prefer to stay on-premise. However, there are on-cloud options like Ariba for the procurement and then you have hybrids for sales and marketing with the CRM solutions from the cloud of the hybrids. Then we have Conquer for travels and expenses management. Then we have the uh, uh, field glass for workforce management. So there are various cloud options available to go in uh, on the hybrid mode to have on-premise and on-cloud and hybrid mode of deployment options for the customers. And the multi-tenancies for large enterprise to go scale out with multiple clusters of the S4. This is from the administration point of view to have multi-tenancies to support large volume of data processing for the real-time S4. So this is uh, a quick, uh, market background to try and understand what has been going on for the last five, seven years uh, in terms of the introduction of HANA with the B4, BW on HANA and Suite on HANA and then today we are on the S4. A brief introduction about the HANA, I'm sure some of you must be already aware, but this slide will give you a quick recap of why the need of HANA has been put in place for our ERP SAP customers. So we have here on the left-hand side of the slide, the existing ERP system with a line of business in which uh, there are various ERP transactions for the industry or the sector, which is uh, for the customer, the line of business. And it requires a underlying database, which is uh, powered by a spinning disk. And these spinning disks run on a particular RPM, which is a fixed. So a one terabyte uh, hard disk drive, which is a spinning disk, spins about a maximum of 30,000 rotations per minute. And it cannot be increased. It is a fixed mechanical number, which is a uh, highest speed on which the Oracle would spin on their hard disk drive. But over a period of time, with the increasing amount of volume of data, increasing number of customers, increasing number of transactions and, and products and production, the volume of the data has been growing and the speed of 30,000 rotations per minute is not sufficient enough. And the same goes for the BW application for the uh, various uh, data warehousing to go and store data over here. It also has a limitation because all of these other traditional database have a spinning disk in the back end and they have a limitation on the highest speed of rotations per minute. So with the exponential growth of data here and here, there is always a performance issue and the scalability of the business at point, right? So SAP HANA was released uh, from the SAP by working through multiple experience of the SAP live cache, working with the in-memory computing and hardware partners with the IBM, with the HP, with the Cisco, Dell, Hitachi, NEC, VMware, and the Intel Corporation to create a new in-memory database. So SAP HANA is entirely in the in-memory. Uh, of course, uh, it is not like the usual memory that when you remove the power supply, the data will be erased. It's not that kind of memory. It's a special disk-based memory built with the solid state disk. It's like your regular USB 
um, a drive or the pen drive that we use and we insert the pen drive in computers to copy movies and documents and when you remove it the data still persists no power supply so that kind of concept has been derived here into the main memory module of the HANA and the various added advantage from the scalability point of view and the need for speed in terms of high end performance so all of those multiple features and of course the lower cost of the uh, uh, maintenance over a period of time the HANA has proven to be uh, comfortable with various implementation partners and of course more importantly the customers so today you will find HANA database supporting the ERP for writing data and the business warehouse or the planning applications for the reporting and planning and even predictive or forecasting this type of uh, functionality helps reduce the other maintenance cost of maintaining multiple databases with limitations for the need for speed and not just the need for speed the need for scalability because over a period of time HANA data is also going to bound to be in increasing exponential growth of data and for which HANA has prepared a scalability option to either scale up or scale out with multiple subsystems of clusters of HANA data nodes. So it has proven to be uh, successful from starting from 2011, followed by the, the market background as we've seen in the previous slide. So we have today HANA supporting MCOD. MCOD is a uh, consulting terminology. Some of you may be aware, M stands for multiple component on single database. So MCOT, which is one HANA database supporting multiple application systems. All right, so this is the uh, technology. Of course, you can have uh, various type of combinations of the deployment uh, with multiple uh, multi-tenancies and uh, thereafter with different types of uh, subsystems. So, Going forward to the next slide, we have the S4 technical compartment. So every particular business enterprise have a list of ingredients. The first ingredient is, of course, a HANA database. The second ingredient are the HANA live views. Those HANA views, uh, which we have in the HANA database with attribute views, analytic views. Of course, today in HANA 2, we work more on the calculation views. And then the S4 HANA virtual data models. The S4 HANA virtual data models are supported by the CDS views built in the S4. And there are multiple types of such VDMs, virtual data models, CDS views subtypes. Okay, so we have basic CDS view, open CDS view, composite CDS view, consumption CDS view, interface CDS view, transactional CDS view, and the extension CDS views. So there are many types of such CDS views which are uh, made available by the SAP as a standard. Of course, we will learn how to create. And uh, why we need a CDS view is because of the uh, flexibility of the uh, development in the application layer because we have database layer HANA views, right, which are offered by the HANA Live, and uh, the CDS views for more complex development. So, on uh, terms of the need of having a CDS view when we already have the HANA views, let's just have a quick uh, diagrammatic representation. I'm going to use the blackboard over here. So, we have uh, the HANA database layer, okay, and in here we have HANA views, attribute views, analytic views, and our calculation views, all right? Then on top you will have the S4, of course, with the migration uh, of the ERP to the S4, we will discuss about the migration path from various ERP uh, and of course the migration path for the BW to be on B4 and connect to the S4 that is included in the program. But for now, why we need the CDS views, okay, CDS stands for Core Data Services of the S4, 
uh, and when we already have the HANA views. So HANA views are uh, extensively developed in the database itself. And uh, with regards to the uh, migration, because uh, our ERP is getting migration from the classic ERP, various index tables, okay, from Oracle, various aggregate tables from the Oracle, Sybase, or DB2 from our ERP on some database have uh, been created over the various generations of the ERP. And those index tables and aggregate tables from Oracle and Sybase and DB2, uh, etc., has been dropped. But the structure of those Oracle-based tables, uh, which are consumed in an SAP, a standard SAP index table and aggregate tables, are retained as a structure. So it then creates a structure-based view generated from the migration from the classic ERP. So this is the first uh, landing area for those index and aggregate tables that are deleted with the content, but the structure of such tables from the classic ERP are maintained as a view, and those type of views are CDS views. This is the first point. Later, we can also create our own CDS views in terms of using uh, the various components of the programming capability with ABAP, with the Java, because you will have S4 connecting with the cloud applications, and then with the Python scripting, and C++, and XSJS, and UI5, and HTML5, and other programming like ASP, PHP, JavaScripting, etc. So CDS is not just local to the ERP and not local only to the S4, but it is scalable to the cloud. And now we will see that our HANA views are consumed further in the application layer by the CDS view for the complex programming which can be built in the application layer. HANA views, on the other hand, are uh, programmable only up till SQL script. Some of you may have experienced HANA developments. So you might have seen that creating attribute views, analytic and calculation views are graphical, and there is one programming option in the calculation view. By using SQL statement, you can create HANA views, but that's not the end of the story. Because of the growing complexity of our ERP S4 customers, there is always a need of having programmable on the application side. And hence, the application programming views, the CDS views, are then derived. Of course, CDS views are also generated from the classic ERP post migration. So we will discuss further why the need of the CDS, but this is just to give you a uh, visualization going forward that we have HANA views. Yes, we can, con uh, we can connect with the HANA views and run reporting. And now we have CDS views, which is more superior in terms of the capabilities and scalable to not just ABAP, but various programming supporting cloud web interfaces. All right, excellent. So let's go back into the slide over here. We were looking into this particular diagram, the ingredient, the core ingredient of the S4. We have the HANA database, which is the only database that supports the S4 HANA. And of course, the B4 HANA, we will discuss later in the advanced. Then we have HANA views, which are predefined by the SAP, known as HANA Live. And then we have S4 HANA virtual data models. Those are the CDS views with the subtypes of those CDS views. By combining these two views, of course, they're all logical layer, uh, logical object. HANA views or the CDS views, they're all logical structure. They did not store data. Data is stored here. So what they do in terms of the definition is to create those logical structure and be able to run multiple programming, planning, consolidation, aggregation, and as per the need of the business, which is later than displayed as an output in the Fury user interface, the SAP Fury, which provides the user the mobile experience or the web-based experience, of course, powered by the UI5 or HTML5 and uh, various other web technologies which we have been using in the SAP, like the NetWeaver 
uh, or the enterprise portal, NetWeaver business client, and other third-party web technologies are all integrated together, including mobile applications uh, like uh, what you have today, Xcode for iOS devices and other Android devices. You have different programming. So they're all compatible with the Fury Launchpad. So whatever um, we create on the S4 layer for the development, whether we are consuming it from the HANA views or we're directly fetching from the HANA tables, or we have those functional complex CDS views uh, for analytics, they are then rendered over to the Fury user experience or Fury Launchpad. Again, in the SAP Fury, you'll find two different uh, types of uh, apps, mobile apps, one is the transactional app in which user can run transactions. So if I'm an SD consultant, my responsibility is uh, to uh, create sales order. So in the classic ERP before the S4, all right, in a classic ERP, I need to memorize my T codes on how to uh, you know, create a sales order. So VA01 is the T code. And likewise, VF01, there are many transaction codes, but in the Fury, no more T codes. It's as good as you enter into a web page, you click on the link on creating sales order, fill up the blanks, and then the order is created in the S4 and the backend. So it's as simple as working with a website. So by using the mobile application, user can run transaction codes on the transactional tiles. Then comes in the analytical tiles, which provides the graphical interface for reporting with different types of uh, uh, mobile experience uh, and dashboard or cockpit, even for the administrators. Then you also have some fact sheets, uh, which give the master data information all right, so these are the different types of apps we will be able to discover in the training system. Okay, all right. So going in further, the uh, uh, this will be the last slide uh, so that we experience a system thereafter. So over here, we have the ERP with the classic SAP ERP list of the tables coming in from the finance and logistics. So over here in the finance, if you've been working with the FI, we have the BKPF, BSEC, of course, these are transactional tables with physical data. And then we have these other tables like BSIS, BSIK, BSET, BSAD, etc., and other aggregate tables. And there are many more such standard SAP tables, which were created by the SAP for the Oracle and other database because of the need of high performance read and write intensive transactions. Because uh, when you have ERP with the other traditional database, there are also some performance and design issues. And today, when you're on the HANA platform, uh, these tables are no longer required. Okay, the data is already here in the primary BKPF and BSEC, and the redundant data for indexes and the aggregates are no more needed when you bring the ERP on HANA. Okay, the same happens for our logistics module. We have MSEG, MRD, MAR, MRC, MKPF, and then these are other tables, uh, material ledger, header, et cetera. These are all other index tables and many more such primary index, secondary index, tertiary index, primary aggregates, secondary aggregates, and the tertiary aggregates just to improve the performance of our ERP on classic spinning disk based databases. Now, when you have your ERP on the HANA, all of these are traditional uh, index and aggregate tables are no longer required. So the data is dropped, redundant data is dropped from these tables. The structure of these tables are retained as a CDS view. So you will find that when you bring your ERP on HANA, there is some data volume reduction in terms of the removal of these other uh, redundant tables. And when you bring your ERP upgraded to the S4 HANA, right, then we see 
further reduction in the data footprint. So all of those other tables are removed. Only the structure of those tables are retained as a view in finance and also in the logistics module. So SAP is looking in terms of streamlining and making optimization in a design point of view in the S4, the fourth generation SAP with the HANA and HANA does not require redundant data, hence further reduction of the data footprint when you bring your ERP on the HANA platform. All right, so this is uh, what we have uh, in our uh, the uh, technical achievement. There are multiple functional achievements in terms of process, uh, we, processes that are being optimized. We will see as we proceed. Okay, so let us uh, log in into the training system and have a quick exploration. The training system is available for four months. So you can practice as many examples and use cases in four months. So four months access is provided with the S4, with the HANA, with the Fury. Okay, I just need to re-log in. And then we will be ready to take questions. Okay, just hold on. I need to reconnect. Okay, so we are now connected to the remote desktop. Uh, you just need an internet connectivity and that's all. You don't need to install anything on your computer locally. Um, right. Okay. So we have uh, S4 HANA. We'll be using the latest S4 HANA environment. Uh, we have uh, 1610, 17.9, but we'll be working on the latest S4 HANA 18.09. This is what we're going to work with uh, in our training. The user ID password will be provided. Okay. And uh, this is our S4 environment. All of those uh, transactions, regular transactions that we have are available here. And we will come back uh, with more details about how the migration takes place, etc. Then the interface uh, layer, let me just, uh, um, go to the Fury Launchpad and uh, be able to connect with the Fury uh, interface. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. 
working with the Google Chrome is a lot uh, faster when working with the Fury. Okay, this is a, a better interface, Google Chrome, because it has some inbuilt extensions with the Fury. <coughs> All right, so we are in the landing screen of the SAP Fury Launchpad. We will learn how to create these tiles later. But what we have now is the uh, home page with all of these multiple groups of tiles that are connected for the S4 HANA. It comprises of the functional tiles, the technical transactional tiles, the analytical tiles, and the fact sheets. Okay, uh, just hold on. Okay. All right. Okay. So we've got these multiple groups over here. Each group comprises of the functional module in DS4. So whether you're a HANA consultant, a BW consultant, an SAP functional technical consultant, a report writer, and a project uh, consultant or project managers. We all need an awareness on S4 HANA. Very important because whether you're working with uh, any project in the SAP HANA, S4 becomes a critical uh, ingredient or a critical business module today. So we have the S4 awareness with the uh, embedded analytics, especially for those consultant reporting consultants, so BW consultants, HANA consultants, and the in general, the business analyst or functional SAP consultants. Of course, SAP Fury, Consultants are required to be able to customize. We will have some examples as well in our, our upcoming class. So what we see here are various uh, transactional tiles. I'll tell you uh, how you can differentiate a transactional tile with the analytical tile and of course the fact sheets. And these are multiple groups and how to create these groups and uh, what are the various KPIs required when you design these tiles and uh, from the development standpoint, how are the CDS views uh, going to help us in terms of acquiring the analytical uh, uh, apps in the Fury layer. Of course, we need to have some developments working with the ABAP side as well. So we'll also learn the basic ABAP on the S4 so that we know how to create those CDS views. And then we can prescribe to our ABAPers on the basic syntaxes that are needed for the creation, for the customization, or for the maintenance of the CDS views. Okay, I will not execute these tiles right now. Uh, uh, because we are in a demo session and if you start executing, we'll go more deeper. But this is just to give you a glimpse, a quick heads up that this is what we were working as the final interface. Of course, there are different other uh, BOBI reporting tools that we can connect for HANA views. But for CDS views, we work here with the SAP Fury. Okay, now let us go in here into the uh, start menu and open the HANA studio.
Okay. So, uh, you have uh, with the various uh, HANA modeling over here. All right, so uh, you have the HANA views in here. So I believe everybody knows how to create the HANA views. So we will just have one recap later in our upcoming session, how these views are created. Uh, and then uh, uh, we proceed into the studio. So just explore with the system access with multiple catalog and the schemas. And then the content with the packages. And each of these packages provide uh, the various HANA views. Either it is custom built, or it is defined by the SAP. So those uh, HANA views defined by the SAP will be located here in the SAP folder. Okay, so here in the SAP, in the ERP, and then your enterprise application, SAP application, simple finance application, and others you have over here. You can check whichever is required. These are multiple predefined views. Created by the SAP on the HANA database directly. So we'll also learn how to create these views, just a quick recap in case if you've not worked on HANA already. But if you've already worked on HANA with these views, then uh, we will see further on how these views are consumed at the presentation layer. Then let's go over to the uh, ABAP perspective, which is where you have the uh, option for working with uh, various uh, development, especially for the uh, development of the CDS view. And we require to connect uh, with the uh, ABAP application. All right, uh, for example, here connecting with the uh, ABAP project, and uh, we will have different options for development over here. And if you're working with the uh, CDS views, we will see the CDS views development. Okay. So this is uh, just to give you the idea. Uh, I just click, okay. So this is to give you an idea about how the um, interfaces will work. And uh, when we come back for our session, we will have a more interesting uh, list of activities that uh, we create in terms of working with our uh, ABAP CDS views and the programs that are associated. Now let us go back into the Fury application and open one of those apps which are going to be uh, available for the CDS views for the uh, app consumer or reporting. So I'm gonna go here to the user app finder because I can see there are hundreds of apps available to the user. So it becomes difficult to scroll up and down because of combination of functional and technical apps. So I will go to the app finder so that it gives me the available list of apps. Of course, it's gonna take time because I'm gonna pull all of those uh, tiles and roles and uh, we will be able to check each of those from the left hand side of the screen uh, from here. And then you'll be able to select the catalog. So you have different like SD, FI, MM, uh, and BW, or other types of groups you will find, including administration, system monitoring, cockpit, uh, etc. These are all multiple groups. And for each of the group you select, it will tell you the list of those tiles that are uh, responsible to show you the various analytical tiles, transactional tiles, the fact sheets, and any other web links which are associated with the apps. So according to the group. So I'm gonna go here to one of the uh, group, uh, which is called a uh, query browser. Query browser. The query browser will give you two things. One, the CDS views, and the other, the BW views. BW queries, both it is going to give you. Okay, so 
let's go here on to the left hand side you can of course search uh, from the uh, search icon which you can find on the right hand corner and i have here the query browser okay so the query browser is the name of the app in this app we have one tile which tells you the list of all those queries which are created from the application layer what application layer s4 hana application b4 hana application it will give you the cds views which are created from the s4 or generated from the s4 by the standard sap and those bw views which are bw queries which are also automatically generated out of the cds views because there are many types of cds views uh, we need to emphasize upon and so that we can derive the bw queries uh, thereafter but for now our experience let us go in here into this query browser app it pops up with the list of those activated cds views make sure when you're developing the cds views we will learn how to create and develop and so forth so make sure that your cds views are activated in the back end s4 and the all data services are enabled and we will learn how to uh, uh, use those annotations for the all data services so i have here a list of various uh, uh, CDS views. These are standard CDS views. So SAP has done their homework when releasing S4 HANA embedded analytics. All of these analytical queries are embedded. They are embedded in the S4. Okay. So predefined views for our finance. This you can see FSCM, these are all FI, general ledger, industry sector-wise, application component-wise. Then you have EHS, MD, uh, MGM, EHS. And then uh, if you scroll down here further below, you will see a lot of, for ST, for FI, for logistics, for uh, oil and gas sector. Okay, these are application components. So all of these start with the C underscore, C underscore, C underscore, right? C here is a type of CDS view. Okay, these are all CDS view of type consumption. These are all consumption CDS views. So there is also a naming standard that we follow at the time of creating these CDS views based upon the need of our functional application components. So let us go to one of these. Of course, if you scroll down here or search for your Z object, you can also find, uh, we will learn how to create our own uh, uh, customized CDS views apart from the ones which are created by the SAP at the time of the conversion from classic ERP to the S4. But apart from that, if you want to search for your own CDS views, you can just go in here, type uh, Z for your ZXY objects, which you create from the back end. And of course, search all through the apps. Okay. All right. Yes, I think I went to uh, other apps. Okay, let's go back, no problem. So let's uh, come back to the query browser. I'm gonna use uh, one of these uh, CDS view. Just click on the link and then you will see the definition of that CDS view. So what are those fields? What data elements are there? And then what are the key annotations which are part of the CDS view. So key annotations are as follows. So analytical query is set to true. So whenever analytical query is set to true, it implies there will be a BW query also generated, which you can find in your BEX query designer or 
your RSRT or any reporting tools. It will happen automatically. Then all data published, it is set to true, which means that by default, whenever you create a CDS view, the all data published will take care of publishing the connection from the S4 to the Fury front end server. You don't have to do anything extra. In the previous uh, version of the S4 HANA, all right, 1610 or 1511, we had to manually configure the all data services, web services, open the gateway, uh, connect, uh, and then if it is idle, then stop the connection, recreate. So there are some manual tasks, but today it is automatic. Then the type of the CDS view, you can see here the virtual data model type, it is of type consumption, which means that you can consume the output of the CDS view in the theory layer. You can use the output of the CDS view for BW extraction. So you can use it for reporting in here in the theory. You can use it for extraction as a ODP extractor to your BW or B4 or any other tools, right? You can consume it. And therefore, there is a, a list uh, of different uh, uh, annotations associated with uh, view. And there are others as well. So we're gonna copy the technical name of uh, this particular view. Let's go here on the first. The technical name. In case if I want to see the the, the definition, uh, this is the output. So in case if I want to see the definition, I can Control C copy, and go over to the S4 HANA, and let's go to SC11 for example, and give the name of the view. Display. C-A-C-T Okay, let me recheck the technical name if I missed out anything in here. Oh, the last, uh, it has to be S and then let's display it. Okay, so this is the uh, technical definition we're looking in the uh, S4 and uh, you have here the list of the fields, the attributes, the package in which we will copy the package in our about development on the S4 and uh, you have here all of the information. Now, if I want to see the program associated with the CDS, I can double click on the video source and then I can see the program with the related annotations. So for the S4 HANA consultant, we need to know these uh, annotations. That's all. Remaining other logic will be done by the ABAP team as per the local algorithms required. Okay, so we require to know what annotations are uh, needed for the development. Okay, so we have a list of annotations which we need to be aware from the training. So the name of the view, analytical query, or data service, the type of the CDS view, and others. These are all annotations, that's all. And then how to create these views with uh, some of those uh, fields that are associated with that underlying HANA table or HANA view on need basis. This is the source code. Okay. All right, so this is a quick exploration for our uh, demo session for today. And uh, when we come back uh, with our uh, various uh, documents and of course the available uh, study materials, uh, you'll be able to check in the training system. Okay, so let's come back to our slide.
the list of the documents which are required. So uh, you need HA100 on the basics of HANA, followed by the S4 HANA Embedded Analytics, S4H400, and uh, S4H410, further details about uh, the development of the CDS views. Okay, and uh, please get in touch uh, with the uh, training coordinator uh, with regards to the uh, timeline of the sessions and the documents and the recording of the sessions if required. Okay, and with regards to the system access, you have here uh, the system access. I just uh, updated the slide over here. So system access is for four months. And uh, we start next week, 9 p.m. EST. Okay, so let's uh, take your questions. We have a question in the chat box uh, from uh, Nilesh Patak uh, to give a brief about the CDS view from Simple Finance. Okay, so if I go in here into the training system, this is uh, one of the question about the CDS views because uh, at the time of the migration from the classic ERP to the S4, so we have ERP uh, on some traditional database and the database gets migrated to the HANA database, okay? And then ERP to the S4. So at this time of the migration, all of those classic index tables and aggregate tables, they are dropped and converted to the CDS views. So let's have a quick uh, brief about the table. So if you go back to uh, one of the slides, we have uh, here the slide information with regards to the BSIS and BSIK, uh, and these are the tables, right? We'll take uh, simple finance or finance module as an example. So we see here BSIS or so BSIK. So let's take this table because this table will no longer uh, be available as a table, but only as a view structure post-migration to the S4. So when I go back in here, we will do a comparative analysis before S4 HANA and after S4 HANA migration. So let me just go in here to the ERP system to see the before status of the index table before migration. SC11, and what was the table we want to check? BSIS, for example. So BSIS display, and we see that it is a uh, table in the ERP underlying database, and it is created for the accounting module to store what? To store the secondary indexes, secondary indexes of general ledger accounts, GL account, secondary index. And how many fields we have? We have 88 fields. It is a table in our ERP system. ERP system we are using VAS. This is our classic ECC 6 EHP 7. Before migration. After migration, the same table, which is BSIS, will no longer be a table. So here it is a table because uh, this is our classic ERP, and then of course you can append structure, you can work with all of these. Uh, it's a physical table. You can see the content as well. BSIS is a physical table in finance, in ERP, before migration. Later after migration, okay, 
uh, these uh, index tables and aggregate tables will be converted into a CDS view. So what was the table? BSIS, the table. I'm in the S4 HANA. And now I can see in here that it's not a table anymore. It is a view. What type of view? A DDL SQL view by technical as CDS views are SQL views. DDL stands for data definition language. SQL view. So it's no longer a table. So no more append structure, no more table maintenance, only the structure of the table has been retained as a CDS view. And you can also read down here, okay, on the status bar that it's a generated view. From where? From the BSIS physical table at the time of the migration. Likewise, the BS, okay, so likewise, S11, we go for the BSIK, display, all right? This is the table generated from the BSIK physical table at the time of migration from the classic ERP to the S4. And you can see the text over here. It is a generated view, a generated view from the simple finance or finance module for maintenance of the secondary index of vendors from the classic ERP to the new S4. So it's only the structure. And why a structure? Because maybe we may have a list of programs, of BW extractors or uh, the, the ABAP uh, customized programs or T codes or reports created on the BSIK, BSIS. So those programs will still think that they are retrieving the data from the BSIK. And BSIK in turn is actually reading the data from the original application tables, the BK, PF, and the BSEC. So in the migration process, there are redirection about programs that are injected in order to make sure that the redirection uh, will happen from the table to the views and the customized programs will work as is non-disruptive. Okay, so this is uh, one of the questions coming in from the chat box from Nilesh. If you have further questions, we can spend a little bit more time on the question answers. Next question. Okay, so we have your next question in the chat box coming in from, uh, just hold on. Yeah, from Raj, from Raj Kakarala. Uh, we have HANA Studio having calculation view with other HANA native artifacts. Uh, why we have to use the CDS and analytics? So this question was already answered. Uh, earlier at the beginning of the session. Uh, and what we try to understand is that whenever you have those uh, uh, requirements, so let me just uh, go over to the uh, drawing board. Okay, so we have uh, the database layer, right? So this is our HANA database layer. And then we have S4 application layer. In the HANA database layer, we have attribute views, analytic views, and the calculation views. And these views are local to the database. Of course, it can be directly connected to the reporting layer as well. But when it comes to the complex requirement and you want to have a, uh, uh, a particular uh, development, right? In that case, the CDS views are necessary or the S4 HANA views. And the CDS views, as we have seen just a moment ago, it is derived from those index tables and aggregate tables that are deleted from the classic ERP. And the structure has been retained as a CDS view. So CDS views can be auto-generated and or custom created. These CDS views are later 
consumed in the Fury application. And not just a BAP, we can work with the CDS view because CDS view is compatible with all the programming languages. So CDS views, you can have primarily a BAP, but also you can work with C++ or Java or Python, Python scripting for servers. Then you have XS, JS, uh, HTML, right? XML, Xcode for Android application and iOS. So CDS is compatible with various programming languages and uh, uh, because later, because the CDS views will be connected to the Fury uh, and to the cloud-based application. So it's not just a BAP, you can work with any programming languages which are comfortable for your local project. A BAP is preferred because it is local to the S4 HANA. So that is why uh, the new CDS views provides the application layer computing on top of the HANA database. So HANA views can still be rendered called into the CDS view for more complex development across the different modules okay, of the S4 and not just the ERP, but CRMS, RMP, LM and other cloud web uh, platforms. It can all be compatible. So this is the new approach of uh, the developments uh, from the S4 and compatible to different other scalable upward systems. Yes, we will be using HANA Studio to create these CDS views, right? And uh, for building reports on the S4 HANA, uh, uh, we have some need of uh, functional awareness, which we'll be sharing in the training, yes. Next question from Raj uh, on the chat box. CDS view need ABAP? Uh, yes, a little bit of ABAP annotations are required, and then you can work with your ABAP to uh, uh, create the algorithms. Next question from Raju R. Uh, do we need to know ABAP? Yeah, so we were giving you the list of the ABAP annotations. We don't have to be an ABAPer to be working on the CDS, but we need to know, uh, just like when you're working with BW, you need to have a little bit of ABAP, not a core ABAP, right? So that is uh, required. Uh, next, uh, can CDS views consume from the BI tools or the Bob J universe? Answer is yes, it can. And uh, not only the BI, BO, but primarily the Fury and any other web services. Okay, next session, we are starting on next week. Uh, it is uh, most ideally going to be Monday. Okay, so we will start uh, from Monday onwards next week for our session, but kindly get in touch uh, with the technical team uh, so that you are able to get the invitations for the first session. Next question from uh, Nilesh Patak, SAP Analytics Cloud. Yes, it will be covered and the documents will be provided. Uh, then next question from Prakash uh, Sahu. Uh, what is the need of embedded analytics, right? So as we discussed, the need of embedded analytics is to be able to leverage the S4 HANA capabilities and not just the HANA alone, but the S4 functional capabilities. And uh, SAP has embedded the CDS view in the S4, which can go and connect to the HANA views or the HANA tables and not just the technical ingredient, but go and connect with the various functional modules. So the need of the embedded analytics is to be able to have the full scalable developments uh, or the consumption of the application views apart from the HANA views at the reporting layer, All right? And the next question from Raghu R, how security is handled? Yes, so we will also be discussing about the security authorizations, about these uh, CDS views and the HANA views. It is a part of our training. So kindly go through the document, uh, which is the S4H400 
and the S4H 410, which gives you the complete list of the content of the documents. So these are the documents that we will be using the same for the certification on the S4 HANA Embedded Analytics Plan to be released by the end of the year. So go through the document, you can do a Google tour, a search or you can get in touch with the technical team. They will uh, share you the PDF with the list of the topics that are part of both these two primary document. Okay, all right. Next question from uh, Nilesh, uh, how companies decide uh, S4 for BW, right? So it is the migration path because the maintenance of the classic ERP and the classic BW will be stopped by 2025. So you have to go on to the S4 and the B4 by 2025. So it's uh, how the maintenance uh, from the SAP and we have to go with the uh, latest so that the support is provided. And not only the maintenance support ending on 2025, but also the added benefits and the future scalable functionalities provided from both the S4 and the B4 powered by the HANA database. Next question from Prakash Sahu, what is the scope of BW consultant in the S4 HANA. Today, the BW consultants have a larger scope, not only to work with the BW BEX queries, uh, local to the BW or extraction with the B4, but be able to connect with the S4 HANA and extract data to the B4. And thereafter, the S4 HANA reporting queries, not just the BW queries, but the S4 HANA queries, uh, which is available, depending upon the type of the project. So you have those CDS views automatically automatically generating the BW queries from the consumption CDS view, which can be directly consumed in the Fury or the BW BEX query or BW reporting tools. So there are different inter-exchange happening between the S4 and B4. Next, a question from uh, Nilesh uh, for the development. Yes, all right. So we have the tables preloaded. We have the views available in the HANA and it's predefined to uh, the uh, to do the exercises and data is loaded. Yes. So get in touch with the technical support and uh, get your system access up and running by next week. When we come back, we should all be prepared with the document and the system access so that we are ready to start and synchronize uh, with all the contents that I'm going to share on the online session and what you practice in the training system. All right, so this brings the end of the uh, demo session today. We come back next week on Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to start our first session. We look forward to connecting and contacting with you and uh, to start the program. Okay, so thank you all. Good night, good day, take care, and have a great week.